Okay, uh, welcome to a, a series of lectures on uh, the statistics of reliability. Uh, these lectures were originally part of a postgraduate course on limit space design. Um, and the intention here is to, uh, to give you a foundation in the reliability component that underlies limit space design. Um, I hope in the future to make a more detailed set of videos on s some of the subjects that we will touch on that relate specifically to uncertainty quantification. But hopefully for now this will give you a, a good overview of reliability. Okay, so the, the, the first two sets of lectures are going to cover uh, what is essentially undergraduate statistics with a couple of additional topics here and there. The intention is to highlight the theory that underlies reliability analysis in preparation for the overview of reliability analysis which will follow in the third set of lectures. After that we will then be able to apply the theory we developed to consider how reliability is used in um, setting up and calibrating uh, structural design standards. Okay, so the primary motivation of statistics as a applied mathematical subject is to quantify uncertainty in a given process. Uh, or one primary predictive measure of uncertainty um, is the probability, although um, it is surprising that there is not consensus among statisticians in, in how probability is in fact interpreted. So for the purposes of this series of lectures, I'm, I think it would be a good place to start to explain what exactly is meant by a probability. So let's suppose that we have a certain number of balls and every given ball can be either red or blue. So for example shown in um, this box over here there are a thousand balls and of those uh, 1000 balls it was found that 174 um, are blue. So given that the fraction of red balls is then 0 0.174, one can reasonably interpret that the chance of any given ball being red um, is that fraction, it's 0 0.174. So if, if I were to, to randomly pick a ball a thousand times with replacement, so I pick a ball, I look at its color and I put it back, and I pick another ball and I look at its color and I put it back, 174 out of a thousand times I can expect to have that ball um, be red. The probability can then be interpreted as that fraction of red balls as the total number of balls tends towards infinity. And by doing this we allow the idea of probability to become a continuous value. Now obviously this fraction cannot be larger than one. You can't have more red balls than there are balls. And this value cannot be smaller than zero. You can't have a negative number of balls. So that places constraints on what values the probability can take. So the probability has to be um, an element of a set of values between zero and one. Now anytime one has a physical process uh, which generates an outcome, and that outcome will not necessarily be exactly the same every time the process is repeated. Uh, one has a stochastic process uh, and, one, and one can characterize the outcome through a random variable. So the example uh, we used of p picking a ball at random from our 1000 balls um, can be considered to be a random process and the color of the ball can then be considered to be a random variable. For, th for the purposes of, of this series of lectures, random variables will generally represent real numbers and so we'll be able to take any real value or at least any positive real value. So in the, in the context of structural engineering, the, uh, random processes or random variables that we are going to be interested in uh, will in particular include um, values that measure uh, the, the, the magnitude of a load that a structure has been subjected to, or it can be material properties like elastic moduli, yield stress. Now anytime one, one enumerates a random variable in the way that uh, we are doing here, in, in the sense of giving it uh, the possibility of taking a, a continuous number of different values, uh, one can characterize it through a distribution function, which is to say um, over the range of values that it can take, uh, which values have a higher likelihood of occurring than others. And that distrib uh, and th 
this behavior of the random variable is uh, can often be characterized through a set of values which we will refer to as point parameters um, now if we have a random variable and we have access to all the possible realizations of that variable that set of um, realizations that the random variable can take is known as the population now very often um, this set is actually of infinite size so almost by definition one cannot know the entire population um, but what one can do is summarize the population through a, a, a set of values that characterize its behavior and those values are what are known as statistics um, you will see later on for example that the mean and the standard deviation are the most common examples of statistics um, however, because um, populations are very often very large and difficult to, to characterize, it almost, it's almost never the case that we uh, know the population very well. So invariably, the process that we need to follow is to take a subset of the population, which we will refer to as a sample. Um, and the intention of the sample is that it represents the population, so that if one were to characterize the, the sample statistics, they would give you a fairly good idea of what the population statistics would be. Now, now obviously, if, if a sample was taken with a severe amount of prejudice or bias, that sample will not represent the population very well, and its statistics will be uh, quite different from those of the population. So for a sample to be representative, it is best that the sample um, should be a random sample, which is to say that uh, there is no systematic process followed in selecting specimens from the population to make up the sample. Now, Before we, st we, we start to describe um, population and sample statistics analytically, I think it would be useful to, to, to orient ourselves in terms of the, the symbols that we're going to use. For the most part, when we refer to parameters that uh, refer to the population, we will use Greek letters. Um, notably, they will be, you, you will see that we will use mu and sigma to refer to the population. When we refer to uh, parameters of the sample, we will tend to use um, Roman letters. Uh, so, for example, these might be M or S. Um, in addition, uh, when we refer to a random variable, uh, we will tend to use capital letters, and specifically Roman capitals. I will, I'll most often use just X as a generic random variable and sometimes if I need a second one I might might use y and then as soon as one refers to a specific reala realization of the random variable uh, one then uses lowercase letters so one would say x or y or small m or small s or p or t etc Okay, so the first concept that we need to discuss is the relative distribution um, of a random variable. And what we're specifically going to be looking at here are continuous random variables, which is to say that the random variable can take any value uh, within the constraints of uh, its domain. A direct result of this is that it is not meaningful to refer to the probability of any given value of the random variable we can only talk about probabilities in the context of inter inter uh, intervals. So uh, we, it is, we can only meaningfully talk about the probability of our random variable being larger than some lower, um, lower bound and or smaller than some upper bound. So these intervals can be open-ended, but there, there, there has to be a bound. Um, this is a meaningful statement. Um, the, asking for the probability of the random variable being equal to some value um, is not a meaningful statement. Okay, so in, in that sense, 
the best place to, st to start with describing the um, density distribution of a continuous random variable is the probability density function, which gives you an indication of the relative likelihood of uh, different values of the random variable occurring. We can get probabilities out of the, the probability density function effectively by summing up individual likelihoods um, over an, an interval of values. In fact, that is exactly what is shown by this gray area over here, uh, where what is shown here is an open interval that encompasses all values smaller than this cutoff value of x. And so that area actually gives you the probability associated with a particular value of x in its definition as being the probability that a random variable will have a value of x or smaller. And so the function that uh, that describes this probability, which is the running integral underneath this probability density function, is what is referred to as the cumulative distribution function, or uh, capital F of x. And so what you see here reflected down here is uh, the integral underneath this curve up to that given point of x. So up to this point, for example, the integral underneath this curve has a value of, let's say that's 